Thank you. This is, uh, this is really amazing. I love you right back. Thank you. I love you right back. Uh, I just want to thank a few people, and then I want to tell a, a little story. Uh, first, I have to thank my mother for taking the time to teach a very excited little boy how to play the piano and how to make the sounds that he had just heard her make. Uh, I want to thank my father for letting me hang out with him and, uh, and his older friends and sharing his love of music with me, which was really inspirational. I want to thank my brother Edward for doing the same thing, for sharing his love of music and uh, the things that he liked and, and being a great brother. And we used to stay up late at night and listen to uh, WNEW radio, FM radio. <clears throat> you know it, it was the best. It was great, it was great. And you could hear every kind of music, pretty much back to back. You could hear uh, Joni Mitchell, followed by Jimi Hendrix, followed by, you know, Chick Corea, followed by Bob Dylan. It was just an awesome thing. And it, it really inspired me. And my brother Edward and I did a lot of that. Also my brother Jimmy for sharing his love of music and, and turning me on to different forms of music, some very avant-garde music which um, inspired me. And all of their sharing helped make me into the musician and the person I am today. And I can never thank you all enough. I want to thank my wonderful wife, Kieran, for being such a support and a, a great spirit and for actually being actually more beautiful inside than she is outside. And that's really saying a lot in her case. It's awesome. Thank you for all the support, sweetheart, for all these years. And, um, okay, here's my little story. One night, like Bruce says, there was this club called um, Upstage. And that's where people were, were playing music and, and trying to get it together. And the only thing I knew at that age was that I was going to be a musician for all of my life. I wanted my entire life in music. Didn't know about a hit record or anything like that or how much money I was going to make, but I always wanted my time and my talent to be in music. And, you know, Bruce <laughs> says I used to dance around and, and okay, I kind of don't remember that, but, <laughs> but I, I believe you. <laughs> but um, I was a, a pretty shy teenager, but I was determined to follow my dream and to, to learn how to do this better and, and to get as good as I could be. So one summer night, I walked. I think it takes about six or seven miles to walk from Belmar to Asbury Park. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I walked because I didn't have a car. I couldn't afford anything. So. But the thing was that I didn't let anything stop me. I didn't let my shyness stop me. I didn't let the fact that I didn't have a car or a bicycle. So this one night I walked, and uh, when I got there, I got to the top of the stairs, and Gary Talent was standing next to Bruce Springsteen, and they were organizing a jam session for the second half of the evening. This place called Upstage had very strange hours. It started at 9 o'clock, and then it went till 12, and then they cleared out the building, and they opened up again at 1, and they closed at 5 in the morning. So Gary introduced me to Bruce. He asked me, you know, would you like to be in this jam session? I said, absolutely. We got on the stage, and this thing went on for hours. I mean, hours. And I think we used up all the time of the second half of the evening. And as we were walking, uh, walking down the street in Asbury Park, and the sun was coming up and everything, Bruce, uh, he said, you know, it was really, really great. And I'm, I'm going to start up. A, he had a band. He had a very successful band called Steel Mill. He said, I'm thinking of, of you know, stopping that, and I'm going to start something new. And would you be interested in playing keyboards in my band? And uh, like he said, the same way he said yes to, to, uh, to Vinny, I was broke, fresh out of high school, and it was exactly the kind of thing I wanted to do. So I said yes. And uh, Bruce, I can never thank you enough for asking me to be a part of, of your... Um, your music, your expression. <clears throat> uh, 
And uh, <clears throat> Bruce was a great roommate. Too. I don't remember keeping my socks clean so much, but you say so I did. But I do remember being your roommate, and uh, we had great times together. And one of the things that I saw always was how dedicated you were, how you wouldn't let it go. You wouldn't let the idea for a song or the feeling for a song. You spent so much time working it out, you know? You would, Everyone else is asleep, and you'd be on your bed with your guitar out, and your notebook, and a dictionary, and a thesaurus, and another notebook, and just really, really going for it in a way that I'd never seen anybody do before. It's incredibly impressive. And um, it's also a great privilege to be associated with an artist whose body of work speech speaks rather so much, not just to music and genres and stuff, but to what's essential in life, what life itself is about. And that's why people love you so much, Lucy. <clears throat> it's true. So, uh, you know, all, again, all of that sharing from my parents and, and, and all my friends, it's, it's allowed me to have this wonderful life I have. I get to play with some of the best musicians on this planet, and it's it's beyond any dream I had as a kid. The reality of my life now far surpasses anything I, I imagined uh, younger. So my thanks to the foundation. Thank you so much. This is a great, great honor. My family thanks you, and I thank you with all my heart. All I can say is, whoa, man, this is incredible. You know, I want to say my first thank you to uh, Bruce. Yeah, he's the dude who wrote all the songs, made us all look real good. Love you, Bruce. But I don't get to stand on this stage right here without all going through the years with all the fellow musicians that I've worked with. Uh, over the last 50 years. So a real quick history lesson, okay? In 1963, the guy who was my doctor today, Augie Rioli, <laughs> took me to a teenage dance on Sewell Avenue in Asbury Park, and there was this guy there playing drums along with records. It was Buzzy Lubinsky. I fell in love right then. Got a job with him, sweeping the floor, pulling the records out. Soon after, Buzzy introduced me to this kid, Sonny Ken. He lived in Belmar. Some of you know Sonny. He was the first rock star that I ever met in my life. Had the hair to slick back, you know, go like this, and he'd go right back in place. Then, I was in another band called The Moment of Truth in 1967, and Gary Talent was guitar player in that band. Then it moved on to the downtown Tangiers Rock and Rhythm and Blues Band. We played up here in New York City. And that was with Danny Federici and my good buddy Bill Chinnick, who's since passed. And then after that, Danny and I ran into Bruce at the upstage. And Bruce told that story. And uh, after that, we sought out this guy that I had met in 1967. His name was Tinker. Carl West, he's over there. He made us a PA, drove us around in his truck. We made Steel Mill with Little Vinny, Rosalind, Steve Van Zant. Then it was on to E Street, and that's where David Sanchez lived. We spent a lot of time on E Street. <laughs> we pulled up and waited for David, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> and late, later on in my life came Clarence Clemens, and I, I, miss, I miss Clarence so much. When, he, when I would get to play with the fellas on the stage, Clarence would always walk over and give me the evil eye, you know? He'd, Lopez, listen to this shit, you know? And I would, because Clarence was the kahuna of surf and soul. Later on in my life, a good friend of mine, DJ Jeff Allen, he taught me how to keep a good, positive mental attitude through the rest of my life. My daughter Liz is out here in the audience. Thank you, Liz. Love you. Thanks for coming here. Dean, thanks for bringing her. And I have one more to the love of my life, Dawn Bierce right here. Thanks for believing, me in, believing in me. 
and keeping me sane, and I love your smile, okay? Thanks to the Rock Hall, thank all of you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jason Federici. I'm here to represent my father, Danny Federici. Thank you. And this is Maya, my father's last wife. Um, I just got a quick little something to say, because this really meant a lot to my father, and I'm really, we're honored to be here tonight to represent him and to take this award on his behalf. Um, and yeah, this is easy. No sweat. OK. Um, I just wanted to say, um, you know, in, in the mid-1950s, you'd be hard-pressed to find a, a little kid from West Jersey who practiced the accordion more often on his free time than my father. Uh, by the time he was like 10, 11 years old, if you needed an accordion virtuoso or anything like that, you'd call up my grandmother, Jean, and she'd be happy to book that for you. So uh, along the way, um, my father just had a really special way of putting his soul into every note that he played. He created a feeling, and he made it look easy. If my father was here tonight, he would thank his parents, Gene and Dan Federici. He would thank his family and Maya. And then he would thank Bruce for giving him chills on the back of his neck the first time he heard him play at the upstage. Thank you. Then he would thank his brothers and sisters in the E Street Band for creating some of the best music and best songs that rock and roll has ever heard. On behalf of myself, Maya, my sisters, Madison and Harley, my mom, Flo, the rest of our family, we'd like to thank the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for this honor and for inducting my father. Thank you very much. Hello, thank you. To my amazing bandmates, I love and thank you all. I wasn't sure how to celebrate my 16th wedding anniversary this week, so uh, thank you, Brooklyn, New York, and the Rock Hall for this timely and thoughtful celebration. Amy, my Jersey girl, you are the greatest. A fierce love and thanks to you and our son, Dylan. You've kept me and my dreams alive. Let me applaud you. Mom and Dad, my love and thanks. You danced and had music in our home. You always supported my dreams, thanks to my great brothers, Tom, Mike, and Mark, my most trusted friends. Love and thanks to Maria and Omar Ojeda, you know. Thanks to the Beatles, the Stones, and Jimi Hendrix, who opened the floodgates to everything for me. To Neil Young, David Briggs, and Art Linson for believing in me more than I did in the early years. Without my entire family, and musical heroes blazing the trail. I would not be here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the sacred weapon of music in my life. Now, I've been in the band 30 years, so I'm the new guy. Uh, words can't describe how incredible it is to play inside the band's energy and feel. Last tour, we played over 220 different songs with wild ass on fire improv every night where nothing was off limits except maybe wearing white. Uh, thanks to our touring bandmates, Susie, Charlie, Curtis, Cindy, Michelle, Everett, Clark, Barry, Kurt, Ed, Jake, every road crew, production and management member for your friendship and commitment in making us as great a band today as we've ever been. And to the spectacular fans whose presence and passion for 45 years are the glue and inspiration for me always, bless you. And to finish, a big thanks to a big man, Clarence Clemens. I know you're here tonight, C. For 30 years of deep friendship on and off stage, for those countless magical moments, reveling in this musical family we've all been so blessed to create, share, 
and inhabit all these cherished decades as Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. With my whole heart, God bless and thank you all. Hi. I'm Victoria Clements. Clarence Clements is Vida. I really wish Clarence was here tonight to receive this award. It, it would have meant so much to him. But I'm here, he's, I'm sure he's here tonight with us. <laughs> Smiling down on all of us. Music was everything to Clarence since he was a child. He was known as the big man for many reasons, but especially <laughs> you guys are so bad <laughs> especially for the big sound of that saxophone <laughs> rock and roll hall of fame Thank you so much for recognizing Clarence and the band. Bruce, you made it all possible. Big man would have blamed you for this. Clarence loved his fans and his friends, his E Street family, but most importantly, Clarence loved his family his sons, and I'm so happy here tonight with us. We have Charles Clements. <laughs> Clarence was so proud of you. He would often tell me what a great man you are, what a great father and son you are. He loved you so much. And Jared Clements, wherever you are, your dad was so proud of you. You're kind of a troublemaker, though. <laughs> but your dad would tell everyone what a great kid you are and what a talented young man you're growing to become and how much he loved you. And here with us, we have Jake Clements, Clarence's nephew. You had big shoes to fill in, size 17 to be exact. Good job, your uncle would be so proud. I'm extremely honored, humbled, and touched to receive this award on my late husband's behalf. I really wanted to bring Clarence's spirit somehow with me tonight so that you all can feel his presence. I hope I can do that. I'm going to play something for you. Clarence, not myself, I can't sing on my phone. Um, Clarence often recorded his thoughts and jokes with his cell phone while driving in his car alone. Most of them are quite inappropriate to share. <laughs> but there is one I would like to share tonight. It put a smile on my face, and I hope it will have the same effect on you. Clarence truly was music.
Thank you. back from um, Dallas and Cincinnati and we were talking about all these old time stories that we knew on the plane because I hadn't been out on the tour in a while and we were just going through all these great stories we said yeah we all have to get up there and tell these like amazing stories that, that no one knows and we're drinking a lot of red wine <laughs> we're having a good time and the next day we get an email that said, please cut your speech to 30 seconds, <laughs> one minute at the most. So here I go. First, I just want to say, Mom, thank you. She's here tonight. OK, 1963, my father gave me a Gothic-shaped wooden radio. It was Christmas. My mother painted it a matte pink and put it by the side of my bed. Within a week or two, the sounds of the Beatles first hit, I Want to Hold Your Hand, kicked off Beatlemania in the United States. Though I was one of the million kids who carried my little tin, um, lunchbox to school every day. I had like, I was like in a little bit of a quandary. I had a little bit of ambivalence. I was the person who was like, wait a second. Do I want to date the Beatles? Or do I want to be in the Beatles? <laughs> well, I guess I'm a lucky girl. <laughs> I got to play in one of the world's greatest rock and roll bands, and you kind of know the rest. I'd like to thank Max, Gary, Steven, Roy, Nils, where the new guys considered the new guys, Clarence, Danny, I miss you. Whenever we step on that stage, magic happens, and it's an always an honor and inspiration to play with you. My three beautiful children are here tonight that I love, love, love. Evan, Jess, Sam. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being there for me and making it work. I love you. And Bruce, I love you too. <laughs> Thanks for making the best of both worlds possible. Thank you. And thank you, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Thank you. I was told I had 30 seconds. I'm going to take every one of them. Um, it's hard to encapsulate 40 years into 30 seconds, but I'm going to try. The fact of the matter is, E Street Band begins and ends with our fearless leader, Bruce Springsteen. I have uh, played in various bands with all the guys in the original lineup, and um, none, of, none of us had the insight, the foresight, the drive that uh, that Bruce did. I better put on my glasses. Um, I didn't really know Bruce except for a few jam sessions and late night Monopoly games. But even then, he was the guy who had the vision and drive that none of us could muster. He was usually able to get things right. He handpicked the players that would become the Bruce Springsteen band. Steve Van Zant convinced him to give me a try although Bruce had already decided for some reason that we were destined not to get along. Luckily, he was only partially right on that front. 
And over the years and through the various changes, we never lost sight of the goal of being a tight band, lucky enough to have great songs to play and have as much fun as possible doing it. I'm proud to stand here with the greatest musicians and friends I could ever have imagined. Thank you to the E Street fans for making it fun night after night, and to my family for keeping it real. Rock and roll lives. Thank you. Max, talk to the people. Well, I guess all those accordion lessons paid off. All right, Susie, Alex, Ryan, I have, I, I'm so happy you're here tonight. I love you very much. Uh, I, I have to thank our fearless leader. Uh, it's been an absolutely incredible journey. This August is 40 years for me also, as it is for Max. And uh, just let me say that uh, he walks where courageous men fear to tread. Uh, but enough about him at the moment. Uh, tonight is about us. And uh, I just like to say, I like to say in light of tonight's award, um, I'd like to say something about my, my brothers and my sister on stage tonight and about musicians like us. When we're called into the studio, we're not handed a piece of paper with music to play. We're entrusted with the responsibility to use our musical instincts and our particular vision to create, create a record. So, um, and you know, uh, you hope that it, that it all works out. Because, you know, sometimes you never know what's really going to happen, you know. So, anyway, thank you uh, for acknowledging us tonight. It's a fantastic honor. Max. Thank you. Well, I will uh, echo many of the sentiments you heard from the stage tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It is indeed an honor to be standing shoulder to shoulder tonight among these wonderful musicians, my brothers and sister of the E Street Band, because night after night on stage or in the studio, they're a deep and constant source of inspiration to me, and I love them all very, very much. To my wife, Becky, sitting right there. Becky, whose grace, her beauty, and unwavering support during the 36 years of our life together has been the bedrock of my personal life and performing to career and to you. I pledge all my love, baby, and thanks. I have to tell you, anything I've ever accomplished is really due to the, her behind-the-scenes encouragement and her commitment to the strong family life that we enjoy. Thank you, Beck. To my children, Allie and Jay, who are here tonight, you have made your mom and I so proud as you worked your way to adulthood. I thank you for navigating successfully the oftentimes turbulent world of 21st century teenagers and arriving at a place where you're making your own dreams a reality, and I love you. Thanks, of course, to my late parents, Bert and Ruth Weinberg. My mother was among the most dedicated Bruce fans in the world. Now, starting in 1958, when they could least afford it, they somehow managed to scrape together $2 a week for drum lessons. And I've always thought over the last 40 years that uh, it was a pretty good return on their investment. <laughs> Likewise, I'd like to thank my three sisters, Patty, Nancy, and Abby, because it's not so easy living with a kid trying to become a rock and roll drummer. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with the racket. Thanks to my manager and best friend, Mark Stein. Thanks to John Landau and all of his associates at JLM. Barbara Carr, Jan Stabil, and Ali Oscar, and George Travis, our tour director, and the fantastic crew that we have. And Barry Bell for all the work. Keep it coming. 
Now that's an organization. I'll tell you a little story. I thank John in particular for his incredible focus through the years on the music. Over many, many, many long nights in the studio, John helped me focus my drumming. And the hours of discussions of his and my favorite drummers and what made them so special opened up an entire new world to me. During the hundreds of hours we spent recording, for example, I could always tell when we were closing in on getting a take, when invariably John would rise from behind his seat at the board, the mixing console, he'd make his way to the control room glass, and he would physically start reacting to the band if we were really swinging. You know, it was like a thumbs up. And John, I'm pretty sure I never mentioned it, but that image seen out of the corner of my eye in the studio was really important to me through that whole process, and I thank you for that. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, as he himself has intoned night after night on stage when introducing Clarence, last but absolutely not least, Bruce. What can I say that will give you all even a hint of what our 40-year relationship has meant to me? The opportunity to work for, and uniquely in the E Street Band, alongside an artist like Bruce, is so special. Working through growing pains, we were young, illustrating by his dedication, his discipline, and his desire to always, as he said, and I quote, give the people more than their money's worth. And sitting by himself in that room, writing the greatest songs, the musical platform that we in the band have been privileged to enjoy, that is so rare. And ladies and gentlemen, the lessons that I've learned from Bruce are not solely musical. They go way beyond music and have provided for me a perspective on life that has enriched me far beyond the rock and roll dreams I held onto as a child. So Bruce, thanks for picking me up out of that audition lineup back in 1974 and for having me along for the ride. And now the legendary Stephen Van Zandt. For those of us uh, whose religion is rock and roll, this is the one day a year we get to give thanks. Sometime in the next year or so, me and my lifelong best friend, Bruce Springsteen, will be hitting 50 years of friendship. I am thankful for that. Next year, my relationship with my second family, the East Street Band members, and extended family, John, Barbara, George, and former the late Frank Barcelona will be hitting 40 years, and I am thankful for that. The fact that we are still getting better and more popular around the world is due directly to our leader's relentless strive for greatness, his insistence on our constantly evolving musical excellence, and his continuing to write songs at an unnecessarily high level of quality that is both historically unprecedented and profoundly inspiring. And I am thankful for that. I met my wife, Maureen, the same year I joined the band, and she's still getting better. <laughs> I am thankful for her. These are the relationships that define one's life, and now being part of an institution where most of my musical heroes will live forever, it makes me very proud of the life's work we have chosen, that we've been lucky enough to do it, and because it's the work I've loved doing and continue to love doing. Thank you all. <laughs> 